as you can tell, we are not coming to you from the boatyard right now. We're not even coming to you from the United States. That is because we took a transcontinental flight this morning to get ourselves over to Vancouver in British Columbia. We are here to meet with one of our sponsors that we have been talking to for about two years now. So tomorrow we're going to go visit their offices, but tonight we're going to go out, explore the city for a little bit, and have some fun with our friend Matul. Vancouver is a city we've never been to before, and we were sad to only be staying one night. But our friend Matul chose a great spot for us to have dinner, enjoy the evening, and get to know a few members of the team a little better. So last night you saw we had dinner with Matul and uh, Connor and a couple of others from Xantrex, but now we actually get to go inside and see the offices, meet kind of the whole team that we're going to be working with throughout this build because they have just about everything that we're going to need, electronic side, like solar panels, batteries, charger, inverters. And the engineering team, that's yeah. actually one of the greatest things we have access then to the engineers that are designing these things and are going to be able to put together a system for us that will be unmatched. It's going to be incredible. Yeah. So let's head inside and get to meet everybody now. Xantrex is a company based outside of Vancouver who specializes in onboard AC power technology with a focus on marine, RV, and commercial trucking. Oh, that's too cool. What an absolutely perfect idea. You get the name across so well. As we were sitting down to meet the in-house team, we put in a call to Joe, who was our first introduction to Xantrex just after we started the build. Hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. Good morning, both of you, or afternoon, I guess. Yeah, afternoon here. Sorry, I'm kind of like chewing on my lunch a little bit. <laughs> Sitting around, we shared how we got started with our adventures, and much to Matt's excitement, we also had the chance to talk to the engineers about brand new products coming out, where we'll be among the first people to have them on our boat. Still not there. Uh, so, uh, it's been in the making for <clears throat> two or three years now, uh, on and off. So it talks mainly of RC, but also mud bus for the uh, solar controller stuff. And uh, we are planned to talk an EMEA, but that would be great to get your input on that because, um, yeah, an EMEA is a different beast than the other one. Matt was incredibly excited to see the systems operate in real life. So, this one has zero, it's, it's not going to be a product. So now we have a Pi 4 in it. But having a Pi 4 may, makes that uh, you have to be, besides the ID stuff. Matt is having such a great time here being able to talk to all of the engineers and the heads of the departments. He is totally geeking out inside. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if he like skipped his way out of here today. The same user interface to navigate through all the system, all the devices, right? So we don't need to learn that, how yeah. to navigate through this device or how to set up that that particular device, it's like the same user interface, same way you present the data. Yep. Many of their products comply with or exceed applicable requirements for safety, quality, and efficiency. They have a number of new 48 volt items releasing soon, and we will be working with them to outfit our boat with inverters, controllers, lithium ion phosphate batteries, as well as new state of the art solar panels. So we're really sad that we only had the one morning to spend here at Xantrex, but unfortunately this was just a part of our staff. We're actually about to head and see some friends in another location, but everybody here has been absolutely wonderful. There's so many exciting things coming in the future with our partnership with Xantrex. So there's gonna be lots of installation videos, lots of Q&A sessions, and a lot of brand new things that they're just introducing are going on our boat. So we're so, so excited to be partnering with Xantrex. I'm sure we'll be here again in the future or other people will be coming to the shows. So there's gonna be a lot more to come, but it was absolutely amazing meeting everybody face to face, making that connection. And as Matul said, we are part of the family now, which we are so, so thankful for. I think it's been close to a year now since we actually did our first hash recess was this guy right here. 
We have since done the small ones that are going to be where our hallways are on either side, uh, the head over on port side, and the two aft. And just recently, the weather has turned enough, and I got the gel coat and was finally able to do the last one. It's that guy. And that's where it goes. Project today now, now that we're back from vacation, is to cut that opening and get that plopped into place. Um, it could be a lot of cutting. It is incredibly hot in here, so I'm not going to be wearing Tyvex. Now, of course, I want that to be the same dimensions and the same orientation as on the other side. And so what I did is measured off the edge, which is six inches from there. And I'm going to go down below and kind of cut up to find out where my starting point is, measure off of that. We'll start cutting and eventually open it up enough that I can plot this into place, grind it all out, bond it in, glass it, gel coat, all these other things, get the drains done. It's one of those things that looks like it should be a afternoon project and it's gonna take multiple days. So I have two points now cut through so I can kind of see where that line needs to be. Prefer to cut it from the outside because of course fiberglass guts is going down, cut that one, and then measure off that square so we can make sure the kind of fits where it's supposed to be. After getting the furthest forward line cut, a carpenter square was used to get straight lines running aft on each side. Once the entire box had been marked out, Matt measured from corner to corner on each side, and if both numbers matched perfectly, we knew the opening was completely square. Nicely squared. Um, so now I'll just throw a cut around that perimeter. One more measurement to make sure it matched the distance from the other side, it was time to begin cutting again. Now do a test fit. What I'll do is trim along these edge, kind of straighten it up, and then cut back and take away that top layer of glass from the deck, which will allow this then to recess down to the foam, bond that into place, and then I can come through on that seam all the way along the edge and glass all of that. Almost all the way cut down and recess. This side here is actually solid laminate, so it's about uh, a little over about seven millimeters, so a little over a quarter of an inch thick. So I need to grind down this area from the top. I can't cut it out like I did just with the foam cord area. Um, that's going to require tie box and. Uh, To get the initial bond between the frame and our foam core of the decking, the entire surface was covered with our Total Boat Thickened Polyester Resin. Although the surface will be glassed in above and below later, not only does it add an extra layer of strength, but this will get it to adhere to the deck in its proper place. And when secures, we don't have to worry about it rotating or no longer being flush with the deck as it's glassed. Oh, 
Using a carpenter square as a level surface, Matt checks that the newly placed frame is flush with the deck and applies pressure in the areas that it is slightly high. After letting it cure overnight, Matt went back and ground off the gel coat approximately 1.5 inches on each side of the seam. Then the area was taped off in preparation of glassing so resin would not get on the gel coat which we still wanted to keep in a good condition. Then the crack between the new hatch mold and the deck needed to be filled, where once again we used our total boat thickened resin. Finally, it was time to apply the fiberglass. For this job, we used our 12 ounce double bias glass in strips that were three inches wide. After wetting the glass with our vinyl ester resin, a metal roller was used to get any excess air bubbles out of the material. Because this area will need to be fared, keeping it smooth from the get-go is very important. So once the glass had been applied and all the air bubbles rolled out, a layer of peel ply was added at the end. Just getting it all poked up. We'll start glassing it in a few minutes. Um, just gonna be three layers, basically. Um, going this direction, that direction. The other thing too is a duty to build up this flange a little bit more, the strength of this flange. I purposely made it pretty lightweight um, because I noticed on the other ones that I did, those three layers that were necessary, I ended up building up enough thickness that it was a little bit more for what it was needed. So should be good this time around. Nothing has been such an easy saver for me while I'm in here. There's no rest for us here, and as soon as the top was glassed, it was time for Matt to turn his attention to the underside. These were only the first steps necessary for the hatch, and in the near future, we'll be fair in the outside to get it ready for gel coat. Thankfully, the underside here will be getting a headliner, and we won't see this part. But Matt will have to go through and add the gutter for pulled up water to drain overboard. One simple project, so many little steps. Stay tuned for next week's episode where Matt drills a very large hole in the bottom of our boat so we can begin working on installing our prop shaft and some highlights from the rest of our time in British Columbia where we meet up with the guys from Barnacle and our friends Duca and Roberta from Odd Life Crafting for an epic week on Vancouver Island. Japan